Today we're going to learn about objects inside JavaScript and this episode is going to be very similar to the previous one where we talked about how to turn an array into an object. So today we're going to talk about what exactly an object is, you know, what we can use it for and how to create them and how to insert arrays and properties and methods inside these objects. So when it comes to objects, it's a very simple concept. When we want to create something using JavaScript, we can take similar information, for example, information regarding a person and insert them into one object. Now doing it this way makes it a lot easier when we want to use that person or at least any kind of information regarding a person inside a website uh, and just pull out the information and use it. So the first thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how we create an object. So as you guys can see inside my code here, I have a very basic HTML5 setup and I have a paragraph tag in here that has an ideas test. And then inside the script tags is where we're gonna go ahead and create these objects. We're gonna insert the information from the objects inside these paragraph tags. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create an object. So inside my script tag, I'm gonna go ahead and create a variable. I'm gonna set it equal to some kind of name, which could be person. I'm gonna set it equal to an object, or at least the information we need to put inside this object here called person. So I'm gonna say curly brackets, and then afterwards I'm gonna say semicolon, because we want to end off the code. And then inside the curly brackets, we're gonna go ahead and tell it uh, the name of the first property we have inside this person. Now, properties are, let's say we have a person that has an age, you know, a gender, a hair color, you know, these are properties inside this person. It's simply information that uh, will be the same on every single person, like, you know, some kind of information that's going to repeat itself on each person, but the values of these properties are gonna change. So for example, the gender is gonna change from person to person, maybe the hair color or maybe the hair color or the age, everything is gonna change from person to person. So we're gonna go ahead and create a property here and the first one is going to be first name. I'm gonna say colon, and then I'm gonna go ahead and write a string because a name, it makes sense that it's a string. I'm gonna call it Daniel, which is my name. So now we have the first property inside this object here, inside the, the object called person. So now we can go ahead and add new properties to it. Now we can also add something called methods and arrays to this person if you wanted to, but we're gonna go ahead and wait with that till later. So after Daniel, I'm gonna go ahead and say comma because I want to add a second property to this person here. It could, for example, be an age or maybe a last name. Let's actually go ahead and do that. Last name, colon. And then we can go ahead and set another string as Nielsen. After we have this, we can go ahead and set an age. Just we have a couple of different information or at least a couple of different types of data inside this person. So I'm going to go ahead and say age and set it to 25. Just to show you guys, it doesn't have to be inside double quotes. This is just because this is a string and 25 is just an integer. So we're just gonna do that without the double quotes. So now that we have this, uh, I want to show you guys another format we can write this in. Because if I were to go somewhere on the internet and look up you know, how to create an object in JavaScript, most people are not gonna write it in this way, you know, in one line of code. They will actually go ahead and put everything down in a couple of lines, just so it makes more sense when we look at it like this. Okay, so now it makes sense that each property has its own line, so we can change it whenever we want to. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and try to spit something out inside the paragraph tag. So remember, this is just a block of code that keeps a bunch of information regarding one person. Of course, we can have multiple people inside this object here, but we're just gonna go ahead and stick with one for now. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is I'm gonna go ahead and go down to the next line. I'm gonna say documents dot get element by ID parentheses double quotes we're going to call this one test because that's the idea I have my paragraph tag up here punctuation inner HTML is equal to and then we want to set it equal to the variable we have up here called person or at least the object called person so I'm going to say person and then typically in other types of programming languages such as PHP or something else. Uh, this object up here looks very similar to something we call associative arrays inside you know, other programming languages. But we do call this thing an object and we want to treat it that way, meaning that when we want to get some of the data, there's actually two ways we can get the data. Either we can go ahead and treat it like an associative array, even though it's not an associative array, it is an object. 
And we can do that by writing brackets. And then inside the brackets, we can go ahead and say, well, the first data up here is called first name. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that and insert it inside a string, like so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and end off the code here with a semicolon. And then if I go inside the browser, you guys can see that we now get Daniel. Now, of course, this is, you know, how to write out the data from an object if you were to do the associative array method, but we're gonna go ahead and treat it like an object, like I said. So we're not gonna write it like this. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it. Instead, we're gonna go ahead and say punctuation and then say first name, like so. And this is a very simple way to get out data from an object. As you guys can see, if I refresh the browser, we get the same data. So this is how I'm gonna do it from now on, just in case you guys have any questions regarding why do we not put it inside brackets? Well, because this is the way that people usually do it. Now, the next thing we can do with this object up here is we can actually go ahead and add a method to it. Now, a method is basically a function inside JavaScript, but when we insert the function inside an object, we'd rename it as something called a method. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do up here is I'm gonna go ahead and say, well, after we have the age, I'm gonna go ahead and create a method that prints out both the first name and the last name of this person. So each time I need to call on this person's full name inside my website, I can just go ahead and refer to this method we wrote down here that just prints out the full name. So the way I'm gonna go ahead and do that is I'm gonna go ahead and give it some kind of name, you know, like we did up here with the properties. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one full name, like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and say colon, then we're gonna say function, because we want to say we're starting up a function right now, parentheses, curly brackets. I'm just gonna move it down to the next line so we can actually see the code inside the curly brackets, just like we did up here with the object itself. Now inside the curly brackets, I'm gonna go ahead and return a piece of code called this punctuation, first name plus double quotes, which is a string. I'm gonna say space inside the double quotes because I just want a space in between the name plus this dot last name, semicolon. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and print out the full name of this person inside the object. Now, if you have any questions about this, it's basically when we're inside an object, we can actually go ahead and instead of saying person, like I could just copy paste it down here, person dot first name, I can just go ahead and say this because I'm referring to this object I'm inside of right now. So this is another way of doing this. And it's just a much simpler way to do it. So now that I have this function here, I can actually go ahead and go down to my uh, in our HTML code down here, and I can go ahead and print out the full name inside the paragraph tags. So I'm gonna go ahead and say we have the object called person dot, then I'm gonna say full name parentheses, save it, go inside my browser, and as you guys can see, we now get the full name when I refresh the browser. So this is how we can use functions inside an object, which then get renamed as a method. Now, the last thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to use arrays inside objects because, you know, of course it would make sense to have more information than just one thing inside this person. Let's say I also have a pet, or at least I have multiple pets, and I want to write the names of all the pets I have inside this person. So the next thing I'm gonna do after the age is I'm gonna go ahead and say that I have pets, colon, space, or, well, doesn't really matter if you had space or not, then after the colon, just like inside arrays, I'm just gonna go ahead and say brackets, which means that we're now starting up an array. And then I can insert data inside these brackets here. So I'm gonna say the first one is going to be Frida, which is actually my dog's name. I'm gonna say have another pet by saying comma after Frida. And the second pet is going to be Bella. Then after Bella, I'm gonna go ahead and say I have a third pet called Misa, which is the name of a cat. So if I go ahead and save this, well, we do actually need to add a comma afterwards because this is not the last piece of data inside this object. Save it. I can actually go down where we printed out the method down here, change it, and say we have pets, brackets, then I'm gonna say zero because we want to get the first data inside this object here, at least inside the array of this object here. Now, do bear in mind, just like in other coding languages, and I have mentioned this before, that when we use brackets like this inside arrays, zero is going to be the first data, and then from there on you start counting one, two, three, four, and so on. So it's always gonna be zero, one, two, okay? So right now inside the browser, we should be getting Frida, like so. If I were to go back, change it to a two, we should get Misa inside the browser, like so. 
And this is how we can print out data from an object. And this is just a very cool way of saving information on, you know, a lot of data regarding one person. This could be anything from a car to, you know, a house or a country, you know, information what to say regarding these objects. And it's just a really cool way of doing things. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.